kind of a challenge I would have to anybody who watches the Is Genesis History movie. When one side presents their argument, it sounds compelling mm -hmm. until somebody comes and cross-examines them. Mm -hmm. Previously on Is Genesis History Science. When we think about this history of the Earth, there are a lot of things we need to consider. If the flood was truly global, wouldn't there be a lot of evidence? Well, it was the story we all learned in grammar school. I know many people think the Earth formed slowly, over billions of years. Time is not a magic wand that solves all the geological problems of the world. Chapter 2 Blown away by the geological mysteries Dell has just seen and not understood, he retreats to an area he thinks he does understand, computer science. But none of these newfangled tablets, or mice, or even color screens. No. Dell feels more at home at the Computer History Museum, where he attempts to relate this technology graveyard to the film's narrative that science changes and is therefore somehow unreliable. As we looked at the exhibit, I was reminded of how much smaller and more powerful computers had become since I first started using them. Paul said our changing assumptions about computers were really a series of paradigm shifts. Perhaps to a layperson, this seems like a good example of an unstable science. After all, computers sure seem to have changed a lot since the Turing machine back in the 1930s. From the size of a room to fitting in your pocket. It seems like every year new models of computers and phones make last year's models obsolete. The pace is relentless and the average viewer can definitely relate. There's even Moore's Law that postulates that the number of transistors that can fit on a computer chip will double every two years, though this seems to be slowing down. But I too am a computer scientist, though, and your example here doesn't hold up. Sure, there have been massive breakthroughs in hardware, software, and user interface, but a series of paradigm shifts? No. The foundational computer science of a state machine pushing ones and zeros through AND and OR gates is the same as it's always been. It's all just smaller now. Maybe quantum computing will give us a paradigm shift someday, but for now, the illusion that computer science is rethinking everything from the ground up on a regular basis is nonsense. And here's the problem with this movie that you're going to hear over and over. The credentials of the men on screen and the science-y sounding words cleverly edited together are going to sound assuring to anyone with only a passing interest in the science. But when the film takes on an area where the viewer is an expert, like I am with computers... The flaws in the presentation are glaring, and that dishonesty makes you question the foundation of any of it. I'm not the only one who thinks this. For example, Christian astrophysicist Dr. Jeff Swernick said this about the film. One parallel experience I've had is, you know, I'm sitting there in the movie theater watching and listening to some of the geologists and the paleontologists, people who I don't have any expertise, I, I kind of largely have to take Listen to what people say because it's not my training. And I'm, I'm put in this conundrum of thinking this doesn't sound right, but I don't know the details to get around it or mm -hmm. don't know the details to respond to it. When one side presents their argument, it sounds compelling mm -hmm. until somebody comes and cross-examines them. And I found that in the story given by the astronomer in the movie, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. where you know he's talking about how, well, spirals shouldn't exist in galaxies. I'm like, I know how, that, that's not a problem. And he was talking about uh, you know distant light and how it's created. It's like, no, that poses problems. And where I saw the weakness of his arguments, mm -hmm. it said, all right, I, I'm a little skeptical of all the other arguments at this right. point. Because yeah. where he spoke to what I know, he didn't build his credibility, in my opinion. The purpose of this scene at the Computer Museum is to establish the two paradigms that are touted at the top of the Is Genesis History movie poster. Dell's entire premise is to contrast his interpretation of the Bible, where God created the 6,000-year-old universe in six literal days, versus every other origin position possible. If he is successful in setting up this dichotomy, Dell's experts can attempt to poke holes in naturalistic theories, and his audience will count that in the proof column for the young Earth creation. Of course, that's ridiculous. The theory of evolution could be proven completely wrong tomorrow, and that wouldn't lend a shred of evidence to the claim of creation. These ideas may be in conflict, but they're not the only possibilities. Each one needs to be evaluated separately with its own evidence. With that in mind, Dell talks to Paul A. Nelson, second up in the film's parade of PhDs. They don't mention it, but Nelson's doctorate isn't in science, it's in philosophy. While there's probably no need to go as far as Dr. Stephen Hawking is to declare that philosophy is dead in the light of physics, I'll perhaps quote the Nobel Prize-winning physicist Richard Feynman, who said, 
Philosophy of science is about as useful to scientists as ornithology is to birds. Really, to understand this question of origins, you need to begin with the governing paradigms, the two major views we currently have about this history of life and about this history of the universe. Now ordinarily, I would need to do a deep dive into the claims being put forth to see what the best minds on all sides of the issue have to say and bring that to you as a counterpoint to the expert. But the day is Genesis history came out in theaters, the strangest thing happened. Paul Nelson, the very man Dell is interviewing right now, published this article refuting his own words and the very foundation of the entire Is Genesis History movie. So, if it pleases the viewer, I'm going to defer to Dr. Nelson's own words from his blog entry entitled, New film, Is Genesis History, presents a false dichotomy. I dissent from my role in it. I am interviewed as saying that the origins debate is a choice between two paradigms, the conventional paradigm and the historical Genesis paradigm. However, as is Genesis history defines these two positions, the dichotomy places together what are actually fundamentally different viewpoints. To put the matter as plainly as possible, what I say about only two paradigms is not true. After seeing the film's advertising and promotional materials, I became concerned about the false dichotomy and sent a detailed 2100 word memo to Compass Cinema, asking that my interview segment be modified by adding narration. In my interview segment of his Genesis history, which occurs about 13 minutes into the film, I introduced Thomas Kuhn's famous concept of a paradigm, described as a framework within which evidence is interpreted. I then characterized two competing paradigms concerning origins, the conventional paradigm versus the historical Genesis paradigm. The conventional paradigm includes deep time, i.e. the standard 13.7 billion year history of the universe with an earth forming at about 4.6 billion years ago and life and animals originating later. And all the complexity of life constructed by strictly physical processes with no intelligent design involved. This and, in Is Genesis History's definition of the conventional paradigm, brings together acceptance of a long time scale with an assertion of no design, thereby creating the false dichotomy. Scholars and scientists see unmistakable evidence of design in biology and the universe, but also accept the standard 13.7 billion year time scale. These persons would vigorously deny that their positions are accurately represented by either the conventional paradigm or the historical Genesis paradigm as defined by his Genesis history. So, if the very man who appears in the film to present the paradigm premise foundation upon which the entire movie stands felt so compelled as to publicly denounce his role and the ideas presented, how much should you accept it? What does this say about the claims of the rest of the film? The producers of the film knew about this in advance and put out the film anyhow. Is knowingly breaking the ninth commandment acceptable as long as the lies are meant to forward a specific interpretation of the Bible? Subscribe to both Apologia and SciStrike channels, or merely follow the link playlist to proceed to the next chapter of Is Genesis History Science. See you there.